Hi guys, it's me. I can't believe I'm actually doing this. I always said I'd never do videos. I don't like being in front of the camera. I guess never say never. But I can't fi couldn't figure out how to um, show you how to make the uh, baskets without causing chaos in the um, group because it's really easy. But there's three sizes and three pockets, and that makes it hard to explain with just pictures in uh, the Facebook forum. And I've noticed the event limits me to what I can post. So I thought I'd try my hand here at this videos. So here goes nothing. So what you're going to be making are these cute baskets. This is the little one. On this one, I did flat pockets because it's so little and cute. On the middle one, I did pleated pockets. As you can see. Can you see here? Apologize for my great camera work. And the large one, this is what started it all. This has gathered pockets. I wanted a big basket-like tote to put my embroidery work in or my paints or whatever that I could just grab easily. That, that's why I added the handles. So I could just grab it and take it along with me from room to room. It seems with this uh, home office stuff, I keep getting shushed for, to another room. So I thought this would be convenient, whether I take it to the couch or upstairs or when summer comes to the garden. The pockets are interchangeable. You can put gathered pocket on the middle one or put the pleated pockets on the big one. I have included instructions and in, or I've included measurements for all the interchangeable pockets, except for the little one. I didn't add gathered or pleated instructions, but if you ask me, I can calculate it. It's not a big deal. Um, I thought I'd keep that one simple so you didn't lose your mind. So those are those are the little little takeaway baskets. Um, Let's see, you will be, one important thing, the linings are quilted. You will be quilting them. Can you see that on this one? You will be quilting them uh, because it helps the stability of the basket and it, uh, and it looks good. And it's really easy to do. It's just straight stitching. We all, everyone makes such a big deal about it, but it's not a big deal. I'll sh we'll get you through that. There's a few things you probably have questions on. I recommend using thicker fabrics just because it adds stability. If you use cotton for your exterior fabric, you're going to have to interface it with a medium to heavyweight interfacing so it has a little body. Otherwise, it's going to be floppy. Um, you can use those fancy Decavilles and Decaville lights, but I'm so cheap, I don't use them. So that's why I like to sew a lot with decorator fabrics or faux leathers or upholstery fabric, anything that's thicker and stiffer, so I don't have to interface it. That saves me a step. Number two, as far as the, uh, when we get to the quilting part, you're going to need also something for stability. I like to use headliner just because it's cost effective. It's a foam thing that they actually use in cars uh the soft and stable by annie is wonderful but it's the price of gold here so or the german version uh oh i can't think of its name right now another option you're going to laugh that i love to use in such totes for for stability are these floor cloths from aldi unfortunately you can't get the plain white, white ones anymore. They're now colored, but it doesn't matter because it's inside. As long as you can't see your cotton, uh, you can't see your lining fabric through it. Oh yeah, for the lining, you can use cotton, which I did because we're going to quilt it. So that'll give us stability. But back to these floor cloths. Oh God, I'm all over the place. These floor cloths are at Aldi and they're 50 centimeters by 58 inches. Please don't ask me what that is. Uh, centimeters, don't ask me what that is in inches right now. It's a big sheet and it's cotton and it's washable. But best of all, it's cheap. You get two in a package and it's stiff. 
and it makes great i love using this as my backing for when i quilt so that's also an option uh, check your aldi or little uh for their floor cloths you'd be surprised they're great for those little projects where you don't want to use the fancy um stabilizers you can also use, use foam or the fusible batting I don't think I have any on hand besides me and fusibles don't get along so well. But that's basically it. The supplies. I can't believe I just said all that in five minutes. Um, I know I'm forgetting stuff. If I am, ask and I will try to answer. And now I'm going to switch the camera, stop the video and switch the camera to show you how to do the cutting and the marking. Um, because I don't know how to, I'm not going to edit because I have no idea. I'm lucky if I'm able to upload this. So thanks for popping in and for hanging in this far. Oh God, we're going to need a lot of Baileys for this so long, aren't we? Okay. See you in a second. Hi guys, I'm back. I have a few charts for you that will make life easier for all of us. I will be posting, um, a link so you can download the cutting chart or you can try to take a screenshot here. Uh, these are all the measurements for the three different sizes for all the parts. Then I've also, I will post a, a link to my Dropbox uh, for a PDF file of these three. Um, I've done uh, a charts for the different measurements for the different sizes. As you can see, if I tried to write this all on one pad, uh, piece of paper, you would just lose your mind. Okay, so it'll make more sense once we go along. Um, the top ones are for the markings for the exterior. And then this is the markings for your pocket. This is once your pocket is sewn. And then these are the markings and the sizes for the lining. Beware, your lining after we quilt it. We, when we get to that, I think it's day three. Um, on Sunday or whenever, after you quilt it, we'll be trimming it down and using these markings. But this is, it uh, makes it easier. I found, I printed them out and then I could just mark instead of having to run back to the com lap computer all the time. Okay, let's start. You've cut out your um, square. All the pieces I designed so they'd be square so there was no getting mixed up, which way's up, which way's down. But if you're fabric is directional or anything make a point of what's the top that's why i wrote on the thing top edge of basket just in case you did have directional so i flip my fabric over and i'm going to say that's my top even though in my case it's not so crucial and you see the first measurement it says five inches down so I take my ruler and I do this on the wrong side. So I'm going to flip this because I want it going down from my top and it's easier to draw this way. I, uh, I, I draw my lines on the back side for this so that I don't have to worry about if they'll disappear. I'm using one of those Frickson pens. I have a love-hate relationship. Sometimes they work great and sometimes they don't disappear on your fabric. So be warned. I have switched over to Taylor's chalk with my little wheelie thing. But for this video, this will show up better for you to seam the lines. So I lay my ruler at five inches on the outer edge. I draw a line right across. And I, I flip it because I like to come from outer in and because it's most important. These measurements are exact. If these are a millimeter off, it's not going to break the deal. So now I have this box done. Now I'm going to want to, from the sides, what I just drew here, go in two and three quarters. Remember, these measurements will change depending on which size you are doing. So look at the chart. Okay, two and three quarters on this one. I flip it around and do two and three quarters on this one. Now, 
these are this is the cutout area for your box corners that's what's here you're going to be cutting out these sections can you even see that i hope so hmm. okay now due to the magic of videos <laughs> i have already cut it out on another fabric um from the right side of the fabric now with i would use a chalk marker oops have your part your piece like this with the sides and you will see now we're on the next picture we want to draw lines with the measurement that's here so in this case it says three inches for the small so i draw three inches and i draw three inches i could have draw drew it all the way down but it was my ruler is too short for this video okay i hope everyone's excited and have their fabrics picked out i changed my mind like 30 times now we have that now we want to draw a line across here this will be the placement line for your pockets later um so Okay, I'm going to start from this side. Again, I like to draw from left to right. Uh, the, the chart tells you which measurement. This is half an inch. So from this edge here, I go over half an inch. And the same here. So that's because that allows for my seam allowance and um, with a little space to place my, to have air space so that in case I mess up. Okay, so I have half an inch there. Flip. Do half an inch here. Okay, it is really weird talking to myself with the camera on. Okay. Oh, we're almost done with this. Then you will see I have here, I've given you measurements of uh, pocket sizes I have used. You can change them however you like. In this case, I, I decided to divide it right down the middle. Four and a half. So there's my line. That will that will be my stitching line later. You can change these. Like I said, maybe you want to use it for brushes or tools. And you'll do one inch all the way across. You can do that. The only measurements you cannot move or adjust are these ones. These ones are the corner lines. These make up the corner of the basket. They have to stay. Whatever measurement I roll, you got to do it. <laughs> you can add more here, but it's it's the sides. So you can have a small pocket. But here you can adjust them. Um, like I said, on the different sizes, I've given you suggestions. What I found was nice, but make it to suit your needs. The other option is, you can leave the the pockets right off. No one says you have to add these pockets. I did it because I wanted to put little things in them. These would make great also decorator baskets around the house with no pockets and no handle or handles on the side. This is where you get to design. So we've marked everything here, four and a half on our exterior. Oh, before we put it away, I, I like to fold my pieces always and make a halfway mark. It helps me later um, line things up the same with the middle. You can do a clip or a mark. Okay, I think, oh yeah, that's, that's it for the exteriors cut. In the meantime, you will also cut your pocket fabrics. Now you're going to wonder why I tell you on the chart to cut outer pockets and outer pockets lining, except for the little one, but we'll come back to that in a sec. For the pocket lining, uh, for the outer pockets, what I have done, this is totally optional, but it's a good trick to know. I liked when my fabric is precious, like in this case, and I don't want to do the traditional you take your fabric and it's double the size of the pocket. You fold it in half, you sew it, and you turn it right side out. Typical slip pocket. 
That's how we all know how to do it. But I sometimes don't want to do that because either my fabric is directional or it's precious and I don't want to waste nice fabric on the inside, which no one's going to see. So what I do is I line it. And that's what these outer, uh, these outer pocket linings are. They are smaller than your pocket piece. So you haven't, I haven't made a mistake there and you haven't cut anything weird. This is what you're going to have when you cut, when you cut them. And, and then when we sew tomorrow, you're going to make lovely pockets like this. So that when we stitch it, the back side is clean, but it's not, you haven't wasted the good fabric. I know we're supposed to use up our fabric, but there, we still have limits. Um, you can do it the typical way, as long as you use the measurements of the, the finished measurement here of the pockets is how high you need them. Okay, I think that's it. We cut that. We're gonna, we've cut our exterior. The lining we will deal with um, later because the lining will in the batting or fleece will be cut larger so we can uh, spray baste it together or pin it, mark it and quilt it. But that's another day's step. Today we've just marked the front and we've done these. Uh, we've cut that and then we have the top binding. This is where we're going to make our own binding. This is not bias binding. There's no need to cut on the bias. I just cut three inch strips. The length it says here, you can cut it an inch longer if you like. The same for the gathered pockets. Um, I did the pockets, gathered pockets with the little gathering and the pleats. If you're not sure of yourself or how thick your fabric, if your fabric is thicker, I would suggest cutting these an inch or so longer and then you can always cut it off after you've pleated it and you, you know being short is a real pain in the butt but okay so for your top lining you cut your piece and um since we th that's it cut your piece if you really want to you can fold it and press it wrong sides together so you have one and a half inch uh for this on one of the uh, bags you see I used the coordinating um, fabric that's where the error came in I forgot to list it on the original material list but on these little little ones uh, where I use the pocket fabric also for my lining fabric old curtains great recycling and I had a ton of it um, I decided to add a black to make it accent and that's it Oh, yeah, the, um, I know some of you are dying to interface your pockets. Don't do it. I didn't interface any of my fabrics, and this is normal cotton. And for my linings here, I used muslin, cheap, basic muslin or cotton. No one's going to see it. The same with one of my bags, if I could find it, one of the baskets. Don't have no idea where it is now. Uh, it's also, the lining is muslin. It will look great once it's quilted. But you don't want to interface it because it'll make it stiff. And then your gathers and stuff, don't go there. This is enough. These are just little pockets. This is not a pleated skirt. So, hopefully all that is as clear as mud. Now, uh, go find the link to download your charts and start cutting out your pieces. And if you have any questions, um, ask away and I will try to answer them. Okay, see you tomorrow.